Green, who is going to be sharing his story, his journey, and everything coaching. So I can't wait. So guys, ladies, gentlemen, you have for about a couple of minutes to go and grab yourselves a cup of coffee, cup of tea, some bickies, and come back, strap yourselves in, because we are about to light it up. finally got an interview for the dream job um, and after working with him I got it and it was simple and it was easy yeah uh, I've, I've really enjoyed the journey um... oh has it helped yes it absolutely has um, it's definitely helped in knowing the market a lot better and knowing how to present, like how to put myself out there. Like I would never ever have touched my LinkedIn ever. I, I didn't see LinkedIn as a valuable resource at all. Yes. So in saying that it already has proven to be. And really what valuable. I say, I think you guys are, you guys are great and change, change people lives. And it makes a lot of difference. Um, deliver at a, at a very high level. Um. It was really enjoyable. You learn a lot. Um, it was really easy going step by step. Thank you did. Sessions before Andy do So that was, uh, but I think session five, the, the interview session, uh, if you ask me, was my favorite out of all the other six sessions. So it's not only helped me in my personal um, branding, but it's helped me now on my on the business side um, where I feel very, very capable to to go and, you know. Hey, super legends, superheroes, and welcome to another episode of Fire Six and Seven Figure Coaches on Fire. We are absolutely going to tear it up. I'm really excited because I've got my main man, at Cristiano, and at this guy, we first met. It would have oh, maybe just about a year, maybe a year and a bit ago. And I remember some of the conversations. So he's based on my dream at the moment, and Cristiano. It out in Bali, and I was supposed to move to Bali last year. I'm just so jealous to see everything on his stories and his posts. And yeah, he's just got an incredible life and he's doing incredible things in his coaching business. So, without any further ado, I want to give a big, massive, humongous welcome to my man, Cristiano Green. Hey, legend, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, Dre. Thank you for having me here today. And that awesome Thank introduction. You. Yes, uh, I am living your your life, aren't I? <laughs> I know, I know. And I think um, what well, last time, like we we caught up, and I uh, I told you the story of you know like why I know things didn't really sort of like work out for me. Um, but I love everything that you're you're doing, and you are an incredible human. Because we caught up what well, last week, and one thing that I love about you is like your leadership. So we crew NLP like together. So I've definitely got some questions around that but another yeah. thing is you and ever anybody's got like a problem or like needs help you are one of the first people to put up your hand and be like hey how can i help what can i do so i absolutely love love that about you oh i really appreciate that drain i those things that you say about me as we know in nlp are reflections of <laughs> yourself as well so what you say about me is a compliment you should be saying to yourself as well <laughs> Appreciate you, appreciate you. All right, Cristiano, do you want to tell us a, a little bit about yourself and, and what you do? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, my name is Cristiano Green, and as you can see below, I am a gay men's relationship coach. So, I have been coaching my own business for the last two and a half years, but really, I've been coaching probably for the last fifteen years because prior to starting my business, I was in leadership, and uh, I've. Uh, 
led teams of small teams, but also teams of up to, you know, 300 people. And throughout that journey, I had to use a lot of what we learn um, as coaching um, to actually help and uh, empower, but also get the job done for 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 what I was working with. So really been coaching for a very long time, which is where I spent a lot of time, you know, building up my skills. But I knew that there was a calling for me and that was to really help other gay men. I knew my struggle coming out and how tough it was. And I've also known how tough it's been for me um, finding love. And um, I'm so grateful that along this journey, I've met so many amazing gay men, helped them to also find love and create healthy, happy, passionate and loving relationships. And I just celebrated my one year anniversary with my partner. So uh, along the path, you know, we grow and we become congruent with uh, exactly what it is that we do as well. Love that. Thank you. Can you tell us what is it that you love about coaching? So you've done it for, you know, 15 years in the, like in the corporate world. And my follow up question in a minute is going to be, you know, how was that transition from corporate to, to coaching and, and identity? So, uh, yeah, can you share it that with us? Yes. So, so what do I, what do I love about coaching? Um, what I've loved about coaching is just being able to make an impact on someone's life. Now, obviously in the corporate world, you know, the real reason why you're there is to get a job done. You're there to meet an outcome for the business. But I also know from leading so many people that the real things that hold people back from getting their job done or moving forward in their career has to do with the things that most often don't even happen at work, people's personal lives. So throughout my experience, whenever I was really coaching, I would always love to be able to get down to the real problem because a lot of times, you know, in businesses and, and leaders and people that I, like I said, have moved up the line and um, from, you know, agents to, to managers to team leaders, etc. The biggest problem was is that they always just focused on what they thought the problem was is you're not performing here, here and here. Never going a little bit deeper and go, what is the real reason why that is person isn't performing? What is the what's what's the real reason behind that and getting to the, the layers? deeper, right? So usually what they call that in corporate is the five whys, but I don't like to say why. I like to ask, you know, what and how questions, because I think you get to um, the real reason. So really digging deep and actually finding out what the root cause is, is what I love about coaching. Because again, oftentimes it's never what you think, and it's often a pathway to them realizing what it is that they need to do to move forward. Um, so moving through transition wise into from corporate into uh, a business. Um, well, I did it all at the same time. So I, when I started my coaching business, I was I had a team of 300 people. I was working 50, 60 hours. And wow. I knew that on top of it that I needed to, to spend time and invest in myself to really be able to do that. So if I had just, you know, left one day and started it, I think it wouldn't be anywhere where it is today because I think that kind of you know, dedication and determination to make things happen, even through the schedules, the things that we have in our life, um, just showed how much I really wanted to do what I was doing, because there were many times along that journey, I wanted to give up. But the real transition out of it was just making the switch in my head to say, I am no longer a manager, I'm a coach. And that took a while because along the journey, you would, you, you know, when people ask you what you do, you know, especially when you're starting as a coach, you would say something like, oh, I lead a team of blah, blah, blah. But I also have a this side business or side whatever. I had to, to really make that shift in my mind first to say I am a coach, but I'm, you know, transitioning out. That was kind of how I had to do it to really get to a place. So it was a mindset shift before I was able to actually take the action and really do the work that led to me get into a position where I had enough clients to really sustain my life so that I knew when I moved off that path and into this new path that I was going to be able to support myself and then grow my business um, as well. Yeah, thank you. And talk to us about like NLP and how like NLP had, you know, played a like, and crew. You're part of the, the flying of V, um, Tony K. So can you talk to us a little bit about yeah. that and you know how you help your clients and what of like you know like methods or techniques that yeah that you use? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, so I um did um NLP like I as a as a participant as a um for the first time about two and a half years ago and 
it was at a time, like I said, right when the pandemic was happening, so much stress was going on in my, you know, work life. I was trying to to, to, to start my business and it wasn't really working. Um, and I kind of had a lot of these kind of, I guess, fears and what we call in the industry limiting beliefs. Not everyone understands what that term is, but really, you know, we, we, are, we all know what that is here, who's probably listening there will know what that is as well. <laughs> So I had a lot of beliefs around myself and why and, and me helping other people and whether I was ready for it. And really when I went through the course, a lot of the um, the things related down to me was making excuses and putting blame on other people for me not getting what I wanted in life. And really what I really learned through that experience was that when I really started to take ownership of all the problems that I had in my life, I was then going to be able to take ownership of finding solutions for them as well. So really living at cause and truly taking that um, approach of, you know, yes, if there's a problem in my life, why put the blame on someone else for, for it there? Because if I put blame on them, then there's no way that I can really take a step forward. But when I take that to me being the problem, meaning me owning all of my problems, then I can actually move forward. And so that's kind of what I did there. But then along the journey, you know, I wanted to take the next level, the next level, and the next level after the normal NLP was master's level. And so I went down that route. And each time I went there, I decided just to keep going with an open uh, open mind and learning new things. So the first time I ever did it, I did it for me as a person. The next time was to really learn the skills I needed to, to help my clients with. And then going to master's was just, again, taking that to the next level. And then through going so many times, I got invited by Tony K to be part of the first level of crew that he had. And um, I said, yeah, look, I'll give this a go once. And then as the experience led to it, again, I got to step into more of the, the leadership skills that I have, you know, used throughout my career and not only help the participants, but also help the crew behind the scenes so that they can get the best experience out of crewing, but then give the best experience to the people coming. So through all that, all I'll, Throughout all of that, so many skills were learnt. And then from that, I take the approach of the same thing. Again, helping my clients to really take ownership of their life, their problems, and then the solution to the problems. And again, for, for my clients who are look who are gay men looking for love, you know, it can be very difficult because again, there's a lot of walls up, there's a lot of masks on. And so it's really about helping people to take off the mask and really bring down the walls so that they can really truly look in the mirror and see themselves for the first time. And then from that place, see what it is that they're really looking for in a relationship. Because when we can see what it is that we really, really, really want to get absolute clarity, the next step is just, well, how do I become a match to that thing? So really focus on helping people get clear on what they truly want, but then learn to adapt it so that they can have that relationship with themselves first which then means that they can truly attract it with someone else. And, and again, I help people not just with love, that's the main thing, but people looking for yeah. better friendships, people who are wanting to solve and fix problems with their family, you know, and um, also people who are running businesses or who work in careers where they struggle to really connect with their team. So it's a, a mixture of everything when it comes to relationships, but obviously ultimately it's to find love because so many gay men want that love but there's really a, um, an epidemic that I would call it in the gay community. It's called loneliness because over 70% of gay men suffer from loneliness out there. Oh, and so true. being able to do the work to, to really end that epidemic of loneliness is what really lights me up and fuels me so that I can, like I said, make my impact on the world. Lovely. Thank you for sharing. And do you have for, for, you know, people that might be watching or listening and they're thinking, oh, you know, I'd love to, to get into to coaching. Do you have any like, advice, any top tips that you'd that you'd suggest? Yeah, I mean, if you want to get into coaching, I would say, first of all, what is the reason why you want to get into it? Now, I, you know, throughout my journey, I've met so many different coaches and so many people have this beautiful, amazing, bigger why as to why they want to do it, right? They have a reason to make an impact. They want to do this. But there are also so many people who are going into it just to, I want to do this to make, because they think they can make, some quick money right and that's all good it depends on what you want to do but really knowing your intention because at the end of the day you know money will only get you somewhere in life and if you really want to get into coaching knowing your bigger why and what's the impact you want to have on the people you serve and then maybe creating a ripple effect out there so really getting deep onto that is something i would say is the most important thing and it took me a while to get clear on exactly my 
bigger why because again throughout the coaching journey it is an evolution usually what you start out with coaching isn't what you end up coaching in the end because as you go down this journey um as a coach as an entrepreneur it comes with so many different challenges and those challenges are both on a you know business level but mostly it comes on a personal level and if you do the work on yourself along that journey you become and step into the identity of that coach that you want to be right and then you take on the skills of leadership and going what does being a leader mean to you so it's really about asking some deeper questions behind what it is that you want out of a business out of coaching people out of leading a team out of leading the clients that serve you and leading the people that not necessarily your clients but do follow you because you also have to realize that if you're only doing this for people who want to sign up with you then at the end of the day you've got to know your bigger why behind that because people connect to your authenticity they go or they connect to the truth behind your message so if you don't have that truth behind it it's hard for people to truly connect to you as then first a person that they've just met but then secondly wow who is this guy or girl or anything in between as we all know and then again why would i choose you as a coach so it's it's, it's really just getting clear on yourself what you want understanding why it's important to you and then knowing that again your impact is going to touch people whether they become clients or not i love that what a great answer all right so i used to be a career coach and i am i love that you meeting in the when you were like back in corporate 300 people so mm -hmm. can you talk to me about how you got that position and what was it that the say like the management or the hiring team saw in you and also yeah how did you make that i guess that jump or that that step up because that's huge absolutely huge to look after 300 people and there's i guess most people in the world would never be looking after that many people at one time so that's incredible yeah well um truth is, is i kind of fell into the position now when i started in the position of of moving up to to, to leading the, the, this kind of team, there was only 20 people in the team. And I, at that time, I was actually uh, in the midst of finishing up my counseling degree. And at that point I was wanting to, to jump into that. Um, and uh, the truth was is that I actually, uh, we had a, a previous manager who was really, really um, a bully, right? And what had happened is, is that she would bully a lot of people behind the scenes. Um, but never do it in front of people so that, you, you know, struggles couldn't be seen, you know, blah, 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 all that kind of a, a bully lady. Um, and then really, um, I was the person that actually stood up and actually went to HR about this person. And then after that, it, it ended up being that seven other people followed suit to the point where they all made a, um, a complaint against her. And so what that led to was her getting removed and for a couple of months there was no leader so naturally just because of my background prior to that i had also been in leadership um roles i just naturally helped uh, and led not not because i wanted that position or not um i naturally did that um and so it, that went on for a couple of months and then kind of i actually got poached from a different business to go somewhere else and as i was going to tell the the management about me leaving they were actually there to tell me that they wanted me to take the job so at the same time i was going to go somewhere else and they were offering me this job so um ultimately i decided to stay there stay the course and just over the the the, the next couple of years the team grew so massively and again along that journey of being a leader i i also had to grow because again as, as the team went from 20 it went quickly to 50 then quickly to 100 then to 150 then it jumped from 150 to 250 and then and ultimately ended at 300 when i finally left and so again a lot same thing along the journey of being a, a coach or an entrepreneur it led me to have to grow and every time the team grew i had to take a different level of mindset into how do i lead a team of 20 to how do i lead a team of 50 to a level of 100 150 etc and each step took me to a place of just asking the deeper question of what do i how, how, how do i need to become in order to be the best leader for these people right 
because I also looked at it that if, when you're in that level of position where, you know, you, you're just a step down from, you know, the high end level, the C, the C level, but you're also running a, a big organization, you become the middle person, right? So on one end, you've got to get a result for the business, but on the other end, you've got a team of people who are looking up to you for you to inspire them, to empower them, but also to, you know, sometimes you have to, your, your emotions don't necessarily always matter in a sense. Now, I, I say that in a sense of like, you have to sometimes put your personal feelings aside to do what's right for both sides. So it can take its toll on you if you allow it to, but allowing yourself to have support outside of that to talk to and, and, and to, to vent to is also important. So along the journey of that, it took me a lot of, it took a lot of growth in me each level to get there. And so again, as I got to the to 300, by that stage, if you'd given me 300 and then turned it to 600, I felt like I would have, I would have been able to handle it because of all of the growing pains that I kind of been through. And I just knew what it was like along that journey. I love that. What a great question. Who do I need to become? Who do I have to become? All right, a couple more questions before you, you go. Tell us about Bali life. So you've been in Bali, what, for over a year? Been in Bali for about 15 months now, yes. And I absolutely love it here. I initially moved here just thinking I'll come here for six months and see how it is. But I just fell in love with the place and then fell in love with, uh, with my partner as well along the journey and uh, realised that, you know, I wasn't ready to, to leave yet. And along that journey, I met some great friends. You know, I feel happy with where I'm living. I'm, you know, living my passion and my mission. And, you know, my partner and I are now about to purchase some land and build our own property. So we're moving forward in, in, in ways where I can have a life here and, and, and actually achieve some dreams um, that I've wanted to for, for, for the last, however, 10, 20 years. And uh, being able to do that here with my partner in, in, in a short space of time, because, you know, when you start out your, your business, you know, you might think, can I do this? Can I do that? But it's all possible. And, it, it, and again, it just takes you really realizing what it is that you truly want out of life and your business. And then again, how do I then, well, who do I need to become in order to, to have all those things happening, right? Awesome source, awesome source. All right, so if there are people watching, watching like live, watching replay or listening on the audio side of things, do you have, you know, any boot camps, any workshops, any masterclasses, any challenges, and you know, how can people get hold of you and how can they work with you? Yeah, so yes, yeah, so um, you can contact me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, I'm on all of those platforms there, TikTok as well now. Um, um, but really, yes, I do. I run a monthly masterclass for gay men who are who are obviously looking to master relationships. And we really jump into what are the foundations of a healthy, happy, passionate and loving relationship now whether you're single whether you're you know recovering from a toxic relationship or you're in a committed relationship really understanding these foundation is going to help you to to i guess create your action steps and the pathway forward for you to know what you need to do in order for you to become what you need to who you need to be so that you can attract that kind of a relationship so we yeah, i run these free master classes uh once a month i've got one coming out probably on the weekend of the 20th to 21st depending on what part of the um world you're in um but if you want to reach out you can reach out to me on any of those platforms um and uh i can share more information um on all that there all right, awesome. All right, very last question. You know what's coming. So I'm obsessed, absolutely obsessed with dad jokes. So do you have a dad joke? Do you have a quote, maybe a dance move, something inspirational, something motivational, something empowering, something of value that you'd like to leave us with? Well, I know that you love dad jokes, so I did prepare one for you. So do you want to hear it? Yes, 100%. All right. How do five gay men walk? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. In one direction. <laughs> I like it. I haven't heard that before. That's awesome. Really All right. Like any it. any final words? Anything like like a quote or anything inspirational that you want to leave us with? Yeah, yeah. I really want to leave um, whoever's listening with this is that again, know in life what it is that you are truly looking for. Whether that's love, whether that's 
creating your business, whether that's making an impact, really understand the deeper reason as to why it is that you want that in your life. What's it going to give you? Um, because when you really get to that level of deep understanding of what it is that you want, then what you need to really understand is how do I become a match to create that? And what, who do I then need to become in order for me to have that in my life? Because once you get those deep questions answered, you create yourself the map to get there. And there's always gold at the end of the, you know, tunnel or whatever you want to call it, the end of the rainbow, if you're a leprechaun, whatever it is. Um, but you, it's always there to find it. But you just have to really truly believe that it's there because the journey does come with challenges. But again, at every challenge comes an opportunity for you to grow. So take that opportunity head on and life will be worth living. Christiana, that is just a great place to leave it. I just want to say a huge, massive thank you to you for a few things. Like one, for when we've caught up, just being so like honest and open and, and vulnerable. And also whenever we do like crewing for like NLP, being like a, a servant like leader and just the person that you are. So it's, um, you're an absolute super legend, phenomenal, incredible human. So yeah, thank you and so much. And thank you so much for your time today as well, mate. Absolute pleasure, Dre. And as I said at the beginning, all those things you said about me are those things that you should take away and say about yourself, mate. So thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. Yes.